If you've watched any animated TV shows from the 90s or the 80s or basically anything before the 2000s, it's likely that they were animated with cells. Cells are these thin transparent sheets, each represent one frame of animation and each one would also be hand inked and painted by an individual. The process is completely outdated and inefficient nowadays, but I mean, it looks kind of cool. Marge, I'm confused. I you can see me now. <laughs> so I'm making this video as a quick and simple way to make cell-esque animation, but mostly on a budget. Again, if you want a more detailed tutorial, I've put some links in the description. Uh, this video isn't going to be anything comprehensive or anything, but uh, actually, <laughs> there is no but. This video is probably going to be fucking stupid. So the first thing you want to do in this process is like actually animate something. I know that may sound kind of obvious to some people, but let me just say, I actually attempted to make a cell animation maybe around a year ago, and I began, you know, inking on a cell, uh, and immediately just gave up, because it was too hard. Uh, and that's because I didn't plan anything out beforehand. Planning was actually pretty important to get this process done right, so what I did this time was I made a digital animation before putting anything on my cells. That way I could easily edit, you know, the timing and the poses of my animation, uh, and have something that I think looks halfway decent before I do any traditional animating. Because you know, if you put something on a cell and you don't like it, you can't really do anything about it because it's permanent. So this is my animation. It's only around 20 frames and the character is only gonna have two colors, but like, that's fine. I, I wanted to keep it simple. And also the more detail you add, you know, the longer the process is gonna take. And I wanted to do this only over the weekend. So yeah, uh, so now what? So now that we have digital animation, what comes next is inking. Basically what I did was I overlaid each cell onto my iPad and then traced the lines onto the cell. Yeah. Now, if you have a lot of money and you can afford actual cells and nice ink, I'd say go for it. I do not have a lot of money. I have no job. So instead of cells, I used Ziploc bags uh, and a pen I got for free from voting. Uh, and honestly, it was fine. Uh, actual cells would be way better, don't get me wrong. But again, this is mostly an experiment. I'm just doing this for fun. And I decided I didn't want to waste a ton of money on cells when I could just use a cheaper substitute. Now, FYI, I just told you it doesn't really matter what you use, and it doesn't. You can use any transparent material, but Ziploc bags can be a little annoying. They get kind of wrinkly and stretchy, so it can make it a little difficult to trace each frame. But with enough patience, it's honestly fine. And again, feel free to do anything you want. But now that we have all these inked, what's next? Well, the next step is to... When painting cells, you should use acrylic paint. Uh, it looks the best and doesn't end up cracking like most other paints. I used spray paint and it definitely killed a few of my remaining brain cells because uh, I did it in a closed room, not a, a well-ventilated room like you're supposed to. Uh, don't do that. That is very stupid. Uh, I am very dumb. And even if spray paint comes in, you know, like hundreds of colors and it's cheap, I'd honestly still recommend using acrylic paint for this. But again, if you don't have the budget, if you just can't use acrylic paint, at the end of the day, any paint should work. I mean, it might not look as good, but you know, paint is paint so you can use anything. Now keep in mind, this is pretty important. Paint on the backside of your cells because the paint is gonna overlap your outlines. Uh, and if you do it on the front side, it's just not gonna look good, you know? But yeah, just paint the backside of each cell. It's gonna take a while, like everything in this process. But what I ended up doing was I did one color at a time. And pretty much once you finish painting, you're almost done. Now all that's left is scanning. It's time to digitally scan each cell. Uh, here's a tip. I put a green screen or just a green piece of paper uh, behind my cells when scanning to make it a lot easier to edit in a background onto my animation. And what I used to scan each cell was the default notes app on my iPhone. Uh, it's actually pretty efficient and a lot better than you would think. And now that we have all the cells uploaded to a computer, all we have to do now is put them all together in a video editing program. Uh, I used Final Cut, but you can use iMovie, I think. It's pretty much the same thing. And then pretty much after that, we're done. Uh, just add in a background and that's it. Uh, you finished making a cell animation. Kinda. But like, not really, because, you know, it's actually Ziploc bags. And keep in mind, this is just the way I chose to animate this. It was an experiment. I didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, but there are multiple different ways to do this process. So feel free to, you know, substitute any step with 
uh, any other method, I guess. Uh, like instead of using a green screen, you could you know print out the background and overlay each cell on the background and then scan it that way. Uh, that way you don't have to do any chroma keying if you don't know how to. And again, you could use any type of paint, you can use any type of transparent material, you can use any type of pen. There's really no wrong way to animate, and at the end of the day, this is just fun, you know? Uh, and just as an example of this, I ended up doing two cell animations. One I colored with spray paint, of course, but the other one I actually painted digitally. Uh, and it worked pretty well, so again, this process is malleable. You can do anything you want, just as long as you have fun with it. Anyways, uh, that's it. I'm gonna end the video. Bye.